welcome to Johnny Gould's Jewish State. Thank you to new listeners and subscribers who came on board since the last podcast on UK Lawyers for Israel and football's own European champion, Benfica's Bella Gutman. If you could leave a rating or even a review, that really helps more listeners discover the show. And welcome also to those so kind enough and generous to have donated to the production of this at patreon.com slash Johnny Gould. Tuvia Tenenbaum is known for his uncompromising views on Jewish practice, Zionism and anti-Semitism. He made international headlines this week when he entered a pub in Derry in Northern Ireland. Not undercover, with a cameraman and lighting, and with those in full knowledge, he was there as a journalist from Germany. The assembled, completely sober patrons of the pub told him their views on Brexit, their Remainers, and then on Palestine and Jews. It's uncomfortable to hear. You have a lot of Palestinian flags here. Yeah. Why is that? Because we support them. Why do you support the Palestinians? Because what? Israelis are scum. Israelis are scum. Israelis are scum. Killing children. Killing You're talking about the Jews. You're the kid. Hitler didn't do wrong. He didn't kill no fucking Jews. We've since found that out. We didn't think that at the time, but Hitler didn't kill no Jews. The scourge of the world. What did you say? The Jews, the scourge of the earth. The Jews are the scourge of the earth. Yeah. So, what does this say about Jews in the UK, in Europe, and in the Western world? Are we in denial about the extent of Jew hate in our society? Who will stand up for us if we don't? asks Tuvia. He's a theatre director, playwright, author, journalist, essayist, and the founding artistic director of the Jewish Theatre of New York. He was called the founder of a new form of Jewish theatre by Le Monde and a new Jew by the Israeli Mariv. Tenenbaum is also an academic. He's got university degrees in maths, computer science, drama and literature. As you'll hear, he loves English and British theatre and actually came here to write a book on it when he encountered this sinister frequency in our society instead. Usually my publisher tells me, okay, you would like to have a this or like this, or do you like to go to Israel, or do you like to go to Germany, or do you like to go to, to the refugees, and these books that I did in the United States. And this is the fifth book in a series in, in, by my German publisher. And I said, you know, the, you know, the question is, what would you like to do next? I said, I would like to do Britain. I'd like to do the UK. And why? I am also a theater person. And I remember that years and years ago, 20, 30 years, 25 years ago, something like that, I used to, when I started doing theatre, I used to take once a year, I used to fly to London, spend there a few days, and see as much theatre as I could, and then go on the plane and come back. And I fell in love with British theatre, I mean, English theatre, actually, you can say that. And uh, uh, I was always like, I can see doing so good. I've never seen theatre done so well. I mean, these actors, they lie to my face, as actors should, and I actually trust them. I don't, like, question myself, like, you know, usually you see theatre, somebody says, I'm Hamlet, and you say, Potts, you don't look it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't believe you. And, and then you believe them. Whatever they say, you say, I'm Adolf Hitler, you believe them. What is this? I wanted to crack the thing in, in the theatre that that's so fascinated me. So I said, you know what? A new book, that six, seven months of travelling? Okay, let me do theatre, you know, and I'll go across the UK... You know, start in, in Ireland even and try to get the sense of the theatre. And of course, the main stop will be London. You know, yeah, I saw a beautiful show, by the way, which was an English show in the Gaiety Theatre in Dublin, you know, Full Monty. Right. <laughs> I loved it. I mean, it's like, I was one of the few males, everybody was a woman. It's like, it's like everybody's looking for the Full Monty, I mean, to see these naked guys. I mean, we <laughs> It was gorgeous. I was laughing like crazy. I really loved it. <laughs> you know, I said, oh, great. I am, like, on the right place on the yeah. planet. You know, I'm like, I'm really in the right. And then you walk on the streets, and you talk to people, just whatever it is. And then you hear that there are troubles in the world because there are Jews in the world. And these people say to you, like, matter of fact, I mean, this is not like, I mean, like in Germany, when you have this anti-Semite, especially the youth, you know, they really argue the cases. 
you know, Israel did this and that, Israel did this and that. You know, the Prime Minister of Israel, the, the, the Foreign Minister, they know the names of everybody. They don't know the Foreign Minister of their own country, but they know the Foreign Minister of Israel, but at least they argue. You know, it's anti-Semitism, but at least they argue. These guys are not arguing. They just say it. It just comes out. And this was in Ireland. Yes. Yeah, and in this Ireland. changed the and structure this, of the book. It started changing the structure of the book because everywhere I went, this is what I found. And it was amazing. You know, it's like... I remember one day I was walking on the street in Dublin and I saw these three lovely guys and I started chatting with them. And then I asked them a very simple question. I said, can you tell me at what point in your life did you start hating the Jews? I mean, is it something, or falling in love with the Palestinians, whatever it is, is it something that you, from birth? Is it you develop this kind of feelings that one year old, you know, when you're just one year old, it's five year old, any year old, you know, any other person who does this question, or, or send me the psychiatrist, I went like, what the stupid question it is? Mm. And they took it very seriously. And one of them says, for me, I started developing it when I was 14. And the other one says, which me, I think it was, I started uh, at 15. You, you <laughs> didn't go in asking them as your first question. You'd had some kind of conversation which prompted this question. No, I just, you, 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 you I just, just went up to people I just, and asked just, them. Just a stupid question, you know. No, I, first of all, asking, do you know a restaurant here or whatever, <laughs> something like that, you know. And then, okay, you can go here. The, the, let me ask you a question. I'm very interested to know because, because I hear it all the time here in Dublin and I'm and very interested to know what do you think? I mean, it's like, what, when right. did you start developing this love for Palestinians, this hate right. for the Jews? Like, at what point in your life? Yes. I mean, it's like, is it something like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the answer is, yeah. as like a serious question. And this already tells you where we are. And then over and over and over. I mean, for me, I mean, when you talk about the, the video of. Uh, in Derry, it's just one story for many others. It's the tip of the iceberg. It's the tip of the iceberg, exactly. There are so many of them all over, and that was frightening to see. This book has quite some about theatre, but in comparison with the whole thing, in comparison, very little in comparison, because the things that took most of it by the end of the day is anti-Semitism. I've done anti-Semitism things, but I opt, you know, but it's, it's like a, sometimes I feel like a plumber. I'm dealing with the trash. I'm dealing with the, with the, with the which acts coming. I don't want to do that. You know, like, but if that's what it is, I have to do it, and, and, and that's what happened. There was a Jewish community in Londonderry and Derry until about the 1940s. There were communities right across uh, Ireland. In Cork, there was a shul which closed down after 140 years. Even I have got family uh, that used to be in Dublin and Belfast, but it's not possible for Jews to live exactly. in small I, cities I, I anymore, is it? Somebody from Cork, an example. And he says to me, you know what, I, I, my last vacation, I decided I'm going to Israel. And I came back and my neighbor says, looks at me and he says, oh, you have a nice stand. Where have you been? And I told him I was in Israel. And he said to me, oh, you skunk. That's, mm -hmm. it just comes out. Mm -hmm. I met a very talented Northern Irish pop star in the making she's very talented I went up to her and I said you're real talent I'm going to remember you have a photo taken and she asked me what I did I said I've just started a Jewish podcast and she literally jolted yeah. like I'd like I'd said oh, something you're like annoying. your mother is mad yeah. or yeah, yeah. I'm your half brother yeah, yeah. it was yeah. unbelievable and this yeah, is is point, this it's just it's is this all over the country it's all over. It's very deep in the psychology of the people. I mean, it really explains some things that I, di I didn't understand before. I mean, it's like why we have so much anti-Semitism in the Labour Party and the ad is anti-Semitic, in my view. And nothing has been done about it. And people would still, poll after poll, you know, around 40% of the people would vote Labour. I mean, if the head of Labour said something, what he said about Jews, if he said it about Muslims, you know, you'd be out. You'd be out. Labour would not tolerate this. And so what happens is the people still vote for it. Is The reason is because this is what the people think. That's, it's, it's in, 
in their mind, deep in their mind, deep in their psychological DNA. I'm not say DNA, it's not in the blood, mm -hmm. the blood doesn't have it, but it's in the psychological DNA. This is what a Jew is, and that's what it is. And apart from nine Labour MPs who've left the party because of Jeremy Corbyn's leadership, all the others, or most of the others, talk a good game, but ultimately, if Labour are ahead of the polls, they won't move at all. And this is deeply Look, concerning. I mean, if you dig deeper, you see that some of them, at least some of them, you know, were facing diselection, were facing uh, non no confidence votes. So there is something personal also in it. You know, they stare at the future and it seems like they are not going to be MPs anymore from Labour. So all of a sudden they are all righteous people and they vote this. I mean, I mean, let's be honest. Luciana Berger, she looks like a nice person, a nice lady, but in the first few years when she served uh, in the comments, she didn't say anything about Jews. You know, she started talking about Jews when she felt like it. But to be fair to Luciana, she comes from generations of English Jew who've not experienced this so outwardly. Look, I come here. This is a country which fought fascism okay. in, in Europe. Okay. I came to this country. I found it very, very fast. It's not a rocket science to find it. Just talk to the people. What, she has never talked to the people except for her brothers and sisters? Or the bubble she is in? Then she shouldn't be MP anyway to start with. I mean, uh, uh, one reporter went to Wavertree in Liverpool, you know, where she represents, and he talked to the people, it's from The Guardian, you know, and he found anti-Semitism all over. Even the people who liked her, you know, I mean, it's like <laughs> the comment that one of them said, I mean, if, if I remember correctly, you know, she, you know, <laughs> she shouldn't have done to her even though she's Jewish. <laughs> These are the people you represent, what do you want? You cannot blame Jeremy Corbyn for that, I'm sorry, I mean, it's like, you know... So Corbyn is a symptom... Corbyn is just a symptom, you know? It's a symptom. It's so, a symptom to a disease that exists. So why wasn't it so apparent before 2015? Well, I'll tell you why, because the Jews refused to admit it. But it wasn't part of our government either. Right. Tony Blair, David for? Cameron, you know, you go back, John Major, what, 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 Margaret Thatcher. I interviewed so many Jewish leaders during my stay here, especially in London, one after the other, at least before the change you know, UK came to, or TIG came to, to a being, you know, and everybody embraced Luciana Berger, you know, because she's so beautiful and she's nine months pregnant and all of a sudden she's like the righteous person of the, of the UK Parliament, you know. <laughs> but before that, <laughs> only, I mean, this is the reality, only one MP from Conservatives, you know, agreed to state for the record that Jeremy Corbyn is, is, uh, is an anti-Semite. I talked to so many Jews, to Jewish leaders, one after the other. They refused to say one word against Jeremy Corbyn. I interviewed lords, Jewish lords. They wouldn't say anything. Unless I went off the record. Mm -hmm. And then I got a totally different story. Mm -hmm. But on the record, so if you have the Jewish leaders saying nothing, what do you expect from non-Jews to say? If you don't stand up for your own rights, why would anybody stand up for your rights? I mean, that's, you have to understand, I mean, it's like, this is what happens. Here we are, here in Marble Arch, there is a synagogue there, you know, right across the street from where we are. It's a multi-million dollar building, you know? It's a beautiful, historical, whatever you want to call it. There are hundreds of members in that synagogue, you know? I'm not saying they're coming to pray, but <laughs> still members. And you don't have anything that says that this is a synagogue. You have something, three inches by three inches, you know, on the side corner, telling you this is a synagogue. You are running away from yourselves many times. You know, I mean, this is what the Jews are doing here. I mean, it's like, okay, that's what you want, that's what you're going to get. If you don't treat yourself right, I am not going to fight for you. I mean, this is stupid. I want to take this back and say that the British history, and I'm talking about the four countries of the British Isles, have quite diverse histories. There's never been a pogrom in Scotland ever. Okay. The Jews were expelled from England in 1290. Yeah. There were several pogroms in Wales about 110 years ago. The British Jews, of course, apart from in 1940 with the Battle of Britain, were never invaded by the Nazis. I am from continental stock. I have a very different view yeah. um, of, um, of Europe to yeah. perhaps some of the Jews who've been here five, six, seven, and eight generations. Okay. Does that contribute? 
No, I don't think it's contributed. I think, I mean, because when, when I go, again, if you open the, wide, the lens wide, I remember I was in, in, in Lodge, Wood, it's a Polish mm-hmm. city. It's one of number two or three largest Polish city. It's one of my favorite cities. I mean, my, my family originated in Poland. It's one of my favorite. It's, it's, it's not a, like Krakow, a touristy place, you know. It's, uh, and, and you go in the streets of Lodge, almost every street, Almost every street you'll see big graffiti, anti-Semitic graffiti. Mm-hmm. Some of the worst kind, like Jews to the, send the Jews to the guest chamber, Gigi Gaz, you know, stuff like that, or, or whatever. Even sometimes in German, Judenraus, Jews out. And all kinds of, of uh, Star of David, meaning this belongs to a Jew, you know, yeah. like that. Everywhere in Lodz. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting in a restaurant in Lodz, with some Jews. And I say... How do you live with this? There's so much anti-Semitism around you. I said, no, what are you talking about? There's no anti-Semitism here. Nothing. I said, how do you explain the graffiti all over? I said, what graffiti? What are you talking about? I said, you know all these graffiti, anti-Semitic graffiti, you think I'm blind? I said, what are you imagining here? I said, okay, let's go out together. Why are we still in the restaurant? Let's go out together and see. You know what they said to me? You, an American Jew. And they left. Right. They would not admit that this is happening right in front of their eyes. Okay. I went to the, to the main church, main Catholic church mm-hmm. of Lodz. I spoke to the guy, to the main priest, and I asked him this question. How do you allow this? He says to me, mm-hmm. if you send me pictures of what you're talking about, next week on Sunday, I will present them on the church and tell the people that this is not right. Mm-hmm. I said to him, listen you to me. My plan is to leave to Warsaw tomorrow. But next Sunday, I'm going to be in Lodge. I'm going to come to your church. He said, no problem. And we went to the church. And he put it on the projector. And he said, this is happening here. It should not happen. We shouldn't do this. This is against Jesus. So I ain't got a guy to say it. Why? Because I stood up. Yeah. All those Jews who live there, they didn't. for generations, don't stand up. So can you blame, by the end of the day, I blame you know, British Jews. What you see in British Jews is what you see in Polish Jews or whatever Jews in, in other places. We like to cover our eyes and say it didn't happen. It's not true. I mean, look what some papers did. I put this thing out, this video. Some news organizations here, you know, they know they're Jews because it's, it's very not nice to see this kind of a video. So some news organization, I'm not going to name anybody, you know, what did they do? They went to the normal Jews here to ask them questions <laughs> because they know what the Jews will say. And I'm not going to name those Jews. Some of them I know personally. And they say, of course, this is just an exception. This is not... They immediately put it on. Oh, them. There was some leadership in Northern Ireland yesterday with the DUP leader, and of course she is part of the Confidence and Supply government of uh, Theresa May. Arlene Foster came out immediately yeah, and okay. said, uh, there is no place for this and we yeah. stand firm with yeah. our Northern Irish Jewish community, even yeah. if it's small. That was good. But what did the Jewish leader say? Look at what he say. Oh, this is just an exception. This is another way to do it. Arlene Foster was much better. And how did Arlene Foster do it? Because she saw some people who are for Israel, like Sussex, for France Israel, Israel. France of Israel, something like that. They, they are the ones who put it in. I didn't even know they existed. You know, they put it in, obviously. And so she picked up on it. Because somebody who stands for the Jews did it. Because somebody opened their mouth. If they did not open their mouth, Arlene would not say anything. Politicians, by the end of the day, they will talk and they will move if the people will tell them. And that's what they say to British Jews. you got to open your mouth. you got to stand up and tall if you believe that you are right, if you are proud to be who you are, and if you are not proud to be who you are, and if you don't want to be Jews anymore, just get out. You're listening to Johnny Gould's Jewish State. If you like my regular podcasts, please think about making a donation. My podcasts are free, and I want to keep them free and so donations really help me keep them that way. Head over to my donations page 
at www.patreon.com slash Johnny Gould. Tuvia, there are less than a million Jews in Europe now. We never recovered from the Holocaust, and I think that is something which is very clear to me. And of course, here in this country, it was never a big community, really, and we're at 250,000. What is the future in Europe for Jews? If you don't stand up for your rights, your future, your future is going to be annihilation. You can't survive this. I mean, look, did anybody ever believe that in Britain, in the year 2019, you'll have a major mainstream party which holds practically anti-Semitic views, and people vote for that party? Even two years ago, you wouldn't you'd say that this, you, you got to be sick in your head to even imagine something like that. But, you know, it's here, in front of you. And if that power becomes more and more powerful, what do you expect? What do you expect? Is the future of world Jewry only, exclusively, in Israel? By the end of the day, yes. Because you have to understand, if Israel goes, for whatever reason, because people live it, or if you call them come for it, or because the Europe, mainly Europe, you know, is, is doing boycott in you know, the Eastern world, is boycotting the country, we did not have a Jewish state in 2,000 years. We had a Holocaust last century. If the Jewish state goes, Judaism will go with it. The damage will be too strong. And we have a state. And, and I'm not preaching to anybody. I, I am not living there either. So I'm just saying, I'm saying, stating the obvious. If we don't have that, if we don't keep that state, and if we don't cherish the state, and if we don't live in that state, that state will go. And the moment that state goes, goodbye Judaism. Because there will be some Satmah Hasidim left. <laughs> there will be something like that, but the rest of us will go. Thank you.